Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another film. So, often when I'm making the videos, I'm trying to come up with um, a sort of loose theme as to how the video might go. And um, today, I'm really stuck for time. Um, it's half past nine. I'll show you that, because it might actually... Uh, you can see that, half past nine there. And uh, I've only got all about lunchtime to film this entire video and see what shots I can, I can come up with and it, it struck me that that's probably the case for most people that uh, indulge in this great thing that is uh, nature photography so I'm going to use that as my theme today to try and find some images um, sort of against that time pressure but still hopefully to create something meaningful something nice um, but um, clearly with, with such time constraints I'm, I'm not going to limit myself to, to finding those really wonderful images which brings me on to that uh, exact point. Now in my last video I did allude to the fact that I was a bit concerned that the films were getting a bit samey doing the same um, types of images but the response was overwhelming so I will thank everybody that commented on that video so much I've read every comment I probably won't get a chance to respond to them all but I really did read and digest them all but the, the common thing that came from that is that the videos are just fine as they are so without further ado I will uh, take my new lucky red pants and uh, see if I can find something in this very short window of opportunity that I've got today so let's get cracking and not waste any more time chatting So this little area here almost became my first shot and I'll just explain why it isn't in a second but what caught my eye if you look on the floor here there's lots of fallen sycamore leaves just these beautiful patterns of them and they really stand out because of the, sub, the pine needle substrate that they're resting on but interestingly if you look at them they've got this almost glaucous or bluey colour to them and that's what really grabbed my attention as I walked through this area. Now the pine needles that they're resting on are decaying, really breaking down. And whilst there's probably shots, more close-up shots amongst the pine needles, excluding the sycamore leaves, um, that's not really what I'm looking for. And when, when I pull out and look for a nice pattern picture of the sycamore leaves, when I consider what's in between the gaps, those needles um, are really not that visually appealing. And it's for that reason why I'm going to leave this image alone. But the leaves themselves, really beautiful. It's just a shame about that substrate that, that they're on that's just taking the edge off the image. Now I know I said um, I'm photographing just about anything today. I'm still being a little bit selective in that I still want the images to look as good as they can be. Um, I'll go for anything that comes along today as long as it, it meets that um, three or above. Um, for those of you that watch the videos regularly, you'll know that I score my images from one through to five. Threes are what I aim for on a regular basis and fives are those that just, just really come along very, very rarely. But um, anything above a three will do for me today, whether it's on the forest floor, whether it's in the canopy, or whether it's a broader scene. So let's carry on. The time is now 9.52. Just check in on that. You see that? There we go. Right, onward. There's some sulfur tough fungi there, just to my right hand side, but they're very, very tatty, I'm afraid. They've well and truly gone over. Now given the time constraints this morning, I've just come back to this little area where the leaves are. Uh, so my bag is plonked right in one little spot because I just literally walked away from it to get this and the video camera and then realised that I'd struggled to find 
um, the composition that I've just found now. So I put the bag down so I could come back to it quite easily. And it's just down here on the floor. Just so easy to lose them. In fact, where has it gone? Ah, oh, there it is. So at the, it's just at the, literally at the back of my bag. There's um, an area just here where there's a group of sycamore leaves that's completely hidden um, the floor beneath it by the way that they fall. And if you look around, there's some larger clusters um, which have completely covered the floor. And it's, it's that that I suddenly thought, well, those leaves, those glaucous leaves are really beautiful. Let's see if we can find something and make something of that. So that's exactly what I've done. So I'm going to get the camera out now and get this lined up and get this first one in the bag. So the first thing to do is to get the tripod in position, in a rough position where I'm going to hopefully photograph it from. And it's going to be directly from above because I want the centre plane to be nice and uh, parallel to the ground so that depth of field isn't a huge issue. Now, compositionally, the ribs on the leaves are very critical to this final image and there's, there are two main areas where the, the, the leaves, uh, sorry, the ribs from the, the leaves um, fan out and it's those that I want to incorporate, probably two, two of the leaves in particular in using the fingers of the ribs to form my composition. I have had a quick look um, with my phone just to line it up to see whether it would work and um, it's those two ribs that I'm going to use mainly within my composition. This is going to be my 120mm macro lens that I'm using. Oh, the cap's already off. Take that off. And there we go. So, I'll get this lined up and get back to you. So the camera obviously into place, a bit of messing around with the tripod just to get it at the right height, but it's really looking nice through the back of the LCD there. Currently on an F F16, um, 100 ISO, and the exposure is two and a half seconds. That may well change depending on the light levels, but it looks really lovely. A couple of points to note is that this is going to be a focus stack of two images. This rib um, of the leaf, uh, this end here, is quite high in relation to the lobe of this part of the leaf down at the bottom. Also, there's a bit of deb there's been a bit of debris on top of the leaf, which I've just moved out of the way because that's really not adding any value at all to the composition. So we'll get a little video camera up now, put it on the back of here, and now I'll just discuss the main points of the composition and why I like it. So there is the composition. Uh, just brighten that up a little bit. The exposure that I'm going to go for is quite low actually. I'm, I, the light levels are changing all the time, but I'm probably going to err on the side of caution and go for a quite a low exposure. I don't want to brighten it up too much because it just loses that effect. If you look, there's almost like this silvery uh, appearance to the leaves, which I want to pick up. You can just see it there coming through. Um, through the darkness you can just see these little patches that, which I really want to pick out as part of the image but I'll just brighten it up just for discussion purposes so the the, um, the ribs of the leaves that I was talking about obviously the top one which is really obvious is this group of three fingers here but you've also got <coughs> this this leaf here that's got the echoes that same shape down at the bottom here interestingly <laughs> the um, the, the stalk of the leaf has snapped off that one and on this one it just happens to be tucked behind um, one of the lobes of the leaves so that's really helped with this composition because the stalks can be a real uh, eyesore on, on images like this but I do love the way you've got this nice diagonal as well and it really works and comes together as quite a strong image um, very few distractions or in fact, no distractions at all as far as I can see. All the bits um, and bobs of the, um, the debris I've managed to clear away. And it's a, such a lovely clean image with just two primary colours. You've got the gold of the ribs and of course the silvery green or this glaucous colour of the sycamore leaf itself. Now in terms of 
um, orientation I quite like it in, the, in this position but I also like it um, on the portrait format sort of orientated round to the right hand side flipped vertically I'm not sure yet which I'll go for I'll probably make that decision when I get it on the computer back at, uh, at the office so I shall put that image on now Now just to note that I probably could have spent a good amount of time there taking um, different compositions using different clusters of leaves but I just feel I want to move on and try and get something completely different now. But the other thing was, I don't know that you saw, I was scratching my arms, the midges up there, just terrible and I can't even see them, they're like little invisible monsters but I've got lumps starting to appear where I've been scratching. And the minute you stand still for any length of time, they just find you and then they, they just will not leave you alone. So that's another reason why I need to get moving. So whilst I'm up against time constraints this morning, it, it still doesn't stop me really concentrating on, on looking for those images. And I just want to make the point in that the camera is, is on a little footpath here and I'm, I've just been walking along it, but I'm still paying attention to my peripheral vision. Now within a woodland environment all the colours tend to blend into one, you've got lots of greens and browns and they all merge but just be mindful of those colours that sort of stand out as anomalies and that's what's happened here. To my left there's an earth ball fungus just growing here, I'm not going to photograph it, it's not that, not that photographic but I just wanted to point out how easy it is to miss. Now as I walked into the shot I presume that you didn't see that there and it's only when I pointed it out that you've picked it up. Some of you may well have seen it um, but uh, I just wanted to make the, the point of how difficult, how, how easy it is sorry to miss these things as you're walking along a footpath. Interestingly this earth ball is still quite young and when they're solid inside as they are, as this one is at the moment, they're actually edible. I've not tried it, um, but I, I believe you can eat them. As they get older, they break down inside, they open up and all the spores can then come out on the woodland floor and it can reproduce. So there you go. Keep your eyes peeled, not just in front of you, but also off to the sides. So here's another example of exactly that, what we've just been talking about with the with the earth balls, you look at these um, pine um, branches here on the floor, you've got one side that's the correct way up and because they've fallen you've got some that are upturned and look at the difference in colour underneath, you've got this lovely blue coloration but yet on the top they're quite a dark drab green and that contrast caught my eye as I walked along the path here. Again, not, not, not going to make a great photograph, but um, just that sort of colours and, and tones, sort of the contrast, the differences that you need to be aware of. I will just point out that now the sun's come out, that it's not as obvious. Um, I stood there a few minutes ago just looking, and when, when the bright light's on it, they don't stand out anywhere near the same. It's only when it's in deep shade do you really see the difference in those, those colours. But uh, yeah, contrast is certainly one to be looking out for. So, the time is 11.33. I've got half an hour to get myself a final image and I've got to get out of here. So, 
Obviously I've come down to the water's edge, uh, I'm edging my bets, hopefully I can find something here, but uh, who knows, I'm just going to concentrate, really think about the patterns and shapes, what's going on in the water movement, um, there's foam, there's lots of cascades, there's debris, there's, there's things that have fallen on the ground, I'm sure I can find something here if I really get into that, that, that sort of well, they call it a flow state. I'm not sure I subscribe to that, but um, if that's what you want to call it, um, that's what we'll call it. So I am seeing things here and there, and uh, what I'll do is I'll get probably my phone out and just just eye up a couple of compositions. That will do. So the time I can get here without falling is 11:44. There you go, and I'm. I'm settling on this shot, uh, not because necessarily because I'm running out of time. There's a few other things that I've, I've considered, but I really like this, and I wanted to take something that I always enjoy taking, which is something more creative, a little bit more thought goes into it rather than just that pure representation, which you could argue the other shot was. So this, much more artistic. I've got a little pool in front of me here. The water's lapping in occasionally and I'm using the reflections of not only the trees but also the reflected light. So what's happening in the pool, there's almost a burr patch of rock at the bottom and occasionally the sun catches that and it goes a golden colour. Um, you've got the reflected bright sky which is creating highlights and these are flickering um, within the image um, because of the water movement. And then you've got the greens of the beech trees reflected in the surface as well. So I'm actually focusing on the top of the surface of the water and allowing the shallow part of the, the, the pool bed to be slightly soft. And I'm playing with different um, exposures. I'm taking lots of shots um, as the sun's coming in and out and I'll choose the best one. But what you've got as the water's coming in, it's creating almost like an arc of, of shaping to the, to the surface of the water. And that's helping to form a coherent composition. In terms of um, aperture, shutter speed and ISO, I'm on F8 and the shutter speeds I'm playing around with and I'm moving, the, I'm adjusting those by changing the ISO between 100 and 800 to get me the movement effect that I like the best. But it's just a case of keep taking lots and lots of shots and then choosing the best one. Very, very abstract indeed. Um, I'll just show you quickly a couple on the back of the camera now. So there's the composition. As I'm talking, you'll see the light levels changing. In the centre here, you've got, at the moment, it's, it's quite green. Sometimes that shows through quite brown. You can just see at the top corner there on the right-hand side, you can see there's a bit of brown showing through there. Um, in amongst this darker area here, there's some of the, the golden tones also showing through. And it, it literally is, if you can look at the way that the water's rippling in, it's creating this almost a fan effect as it's going down. And when you see this image in the final frame, you've got to sort of cast your mind out of conventional photography and think more from the artistic point of view. Um, like I say, very abstract, quite creative, not to everybody's taste, but um, in order to just to see quickly the, some of the results that I've got. See, there's one, um, all very similar. That one's obviously way too bright. Um, that one I quite like, but maybe there's too many white bright highlights. You see the brown in the top right hand corner of that one. Quite like that one, the exposure is a bit bright but it will, it will tone down. But you can see this common theme of this, this the way that the composition spreads into the frame. One of the first early shots that were a bit too underexposed. You can see the brown tones again there. But um, lots of potential images to consider and uh, that one's really quite nice as well. But like I say, cast your mind out of conventional photography, think of it as purely art and I'm sure that many of you will agree that it's quite a lovely image and uh, within the time constraints that I've set myself so I'll put that image on now.
Well, I hope you like that last image. I've got a couple of minutes to spare, so I'm just taking a quick bonus ICM shot, and I'm just um, same lens, 120mm macro, uh, a fifth of a half a second, uh, f8, 100 ISO, and I'm, during the exposure, I'm focusing on as a little rapid just there, and uh, during the exposure, I'm actually just rotating the lens of the the, uh, the, the lens round during the exposure and uh, looking at the different effects that I get. If that works out, I'll put that shot on as well. Thank you all so much for watching today's video, images to come in just a second. If you've enjoyed the video don't forget to press the like button and if you want to see more you can always subscribe to the channel, it costs nothing to do that. Leave some comments, let me know what you think of today's images and if you want to support the channel more you can always become a member. You can do that by joining YouTube or Patreon for as little as 99 pence per month. So until next time I will see you in the next one, bye for now.